Good evening. The police today listed over 80 most wanted persons whom they consider to be actively contributing to Jamaica's crime problem. There are over 200 wanted persons across the 19 police divisions in Jamaica. The most wanted individuals were named at a police press conference held this morning at the NCB South Tower on Oxford Road in St. Andrew. They're wanted for serious offenses such as murder, shooting, rape, and wounding. One of the most elusive, according to the head of the police's crime portfolio, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey, is Brian Forbes, otherwise called QQ, who is wanted for a double murder in St. Anne. He described the level of crime now occurring in Jamaica as intolerable and abnormal. For the first 22 days of this year, the police said 111 persons were murdered in Jamaica. This represents a 19.4% increase year on year. For the corresponding period in 2021, Jamaica recorded 93 murders. Meanwhile, the security forces yesterday found two additional high-powered guns at the Stadium East Sports Complex in St. Andrew, where a major security operation has been taking place since Sunday afternoon. The latest finds were an AK-47 assault rifle and a Remington shotgun. The tally of guns found in the operation now stands at 10, including three seized on Sunday, five on Monday, and the two found yesterday. All but two of the seized guns were high-powered weapons, including AK-47 rifles, an M16 assault rifle, shotguns, and an Uzi submachine gun. An assortment of ammunition along with numerous ballistic vests have also been seized. Still tonight, the May Penn police are seeking the public's assistance to locate the relatives of 21-year-old Shauna Lee Green of Palmer's Cross in Clarendon. Now, Green was admitted at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital two weeks ago and is to be discharged. However, the staff and officers are unable to locate her relatives. Anyone knowing their whereabouts is being asked to call the Maypen police at 876-986-2208 or the nearest police station. We turn our attention now to tonight's COVID-19 update where Jamaica yesterday recorded 500 additional COVID-19 cases, increasing the total of cases to 122,463. Of the new infections, 276 are women and 221 are men, ranging in age from 92 days to 97 years. Three of the new cases are under investigation. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 117 cases, St. Catherine 113, St. James recorded 56 cases, Manchester recorded 56 cases also, Westmoreland recorded 48 cases, St. Elizabeth 30, Clarendon and St. Thomas recorded 26 cases each, St. Anne recorded 16 cases, Hanover 7, Trelawney 3, St. Mary recorded two cases, while Portland has no cases on record for the period. In the meantime, two additional deaths have been recorded, increasing the total of fatalities to 2,617. The deceased are a 90-year-old man from St. Elizabeth and a 72-year-old man from St. Catherine. Four additional fatalities have been recorded as coincidental deaths increasing that figure to 204. In the meantime, there were 200 additional recoveries, increasing the total to 68,949. Continuing with the news, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says over the coming months, the government will be looking to remove more of the measures that have been instituted to contain the COVID-19 transmission. He was delivering the keynote address during the opening ceremony for the Jamaica Stock Exchange's JSE's 17th Semi-Virtual Regional Investments and Capital Markets Conference at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston. 
Mr. Holness said the national approach adopted to counter the COVID-19 pandemic of saving lives and livelihoods has served us well. He noted that almost two years into the pandemic, we have both the knowledge and means to protect ourselves. The Prime Minister maintained that citizens have access to adequate, reliable information and resources to assess their own health and risks, as well as their own economic and social circumstances to make their own personal decisions. Among these, he pointed out, are infection prevention and control protocols that have been proven effective, such as mask wearing, hand washing and sanitizing, as well as physical distancing. In the meantime, Prime Minister Holness has warned Jamaica's commercial banks against imposing increased banking fees and reducing services in rural areas, stating that these actions will hurt long-time customers and individuals struggling because of the pandemic. Mr. Holness said the potential for economic growth may not be realized if the decisions of private sector bosses do not consider the country's social context. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark also weighed in on the impending fees and said after dialogue with the stakeholders, he expects them to be responsive. Commercial banks have faced backlash in recent days on news of an increase and or introduction of fees. Both Mr. Holness and Dr. Clark were addressing the 17th Jamaica Stock Exchange Regional Investments and Capital Markets Conference held at the Jamaica Pegasus in Kingston, albeit on different days. As we continue with the news tonight, Prime Minister Holness says Jamaica is poised to become the financial hub of the Caribbean. He noted that the country is increasing its technology in the financial sector with several e-commerce innovations, the National Identification System NIDS, and the Digital Currency. The Prime Minister said Jamaica has a well-run stock market and that the government's policy is supportive of the development of the capital markets by providing a stream of assets and economic opportunities in which capital can invest. However, Mr. Holness said, for Jamaica to grow, there needs to be more than just a liquid capital market that is willing to invest. A greater emphasis on innovation is necessary. Still making Mellow TV news, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is encouraging customers to be vigilant when making purchases from Instagram stores to avoid being scammed. Corporal Kayla Keane of the JCF's Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, said that the Cyber Crimes Unit has made several arrests of persons involved in Instagram store scams such as selling dogs and hair extensions. She noted also that persons are paying upwards of $100,000 for hair extensions that they are yet to receive. Keane pointed out that the police are making inroads in addressing online crimes and she is urging persons to make purchases from reputable sources. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang has given the clearest indication yet that members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, will be accorded the salaries they deserve as professionals. He added that the government will fix the ad hoc manner in which they have been compensated over the years. He declined to comment directly on the issue of back pay, which is now the subject of a court case against the government. The National Security Minister was responding to an appeal from opposition leader Mark Golding for the dispute to be brought to rest. Rank and file members of the JCF have been up in arms about wages owed since 2008. They have indicated in an open letter to the government that we, they will forego overtime payments from 2008 to 2015, but are demanding an upfront lump sum payment with the remainder paid off within two years. The government has offered to pay arrears from 2019 over six years. As we continue with the news tonight, 
Chief Executive Officer, CEO of the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, Andrew Winter, says an Auditor General's assessment last year did not identify any unauthorized access to any of the agency's secured information technology IT networks. He was fielding questions from members of the Public Accounts Committee, PAC, in Gordon House yesterday. Winter appeared before the Parliamentary Oversight Committee to respond to issues highlighted in the Auditor General's audit of PICA. In the report that was tabled in Parliament last year, Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis said that PICA's management did not establish the relevant structures and processes to ensure the oversight of the information and communication technology ICT function and management of IT risks within the agency. She also pointed out that the absence of formal access control policies and procedures at the agency heightened risks of security breaches from abuse and unauthorized use of PICA's information assets. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelley Hill. Do stay safe and pleasant viewing.